Welcome to Electron News Bytes, our show dedicated to updates from the world of electronics and semiconductors. I'm your host, Stuart Cording, the electronics reporter. In this month's show, we'll be examining touch interfaces and data loggers, reviewing advice on antenna placement, looking at some new SBCs and test equipment, sharing the new lease of life given to an old development tool, and highlighting a retro gift for that special engineer in your life. However, if you're in a hurry, use the description below to jump straight to the topics that are of interest to you. Otherwise, let's get started. Embedded systems are increasingly being touted as the place where artificial intelligence will happen. Being at the edge, that is where the sensors and actuators are located, they can evaluate data and respond immediately without having to rely on services in the cloud. But with a number of approaches available, taking the first steps can be quite daunting. Luckily, Daniel Sitanayaka, Head of Machine Learning, and Jenny Plunkett, Senior Developer Relations Engineer, both of Edge Impulse, have poured their knowledge into a new book, AI at the Edge. Published by O'Reilly, this practical guide offers engineering professionals an end-to-end -end framework for solving real industrial, commercial, and scientific problems using Edge AI. It covers how to determine when Edge AI makes sense, design patterns, how to build teams with all the necessary skills, and the iterative workflows needed to create successful Edge AI solutions. The book is available now from all good retailers. With developers desperate to get their hands on single board computers that are available in large quantities, they're looking around for alternatives to their typical fruit pie based diet. OKDo, OK in partnership with Radska, have launched the ROC 5A, a powerful and versatile SPC for engineers educators and developers. Matching the established board dimensions for such products, the ROC 5A comes with up to 16 gigabytes of memory, an 8K video output, and the octa-core processor and AIC accelerator of the RK3588 ROC chip. On the software side, it can run the Linux version 5.10 kernel and supports Ubuntu, Debian, and Android 12 and later, plus many others. Support is also available through the 1.5 million strong DesignSpark community. Boards are available now through RS and directly from OKDo, OK and the first 5,000 boards are offered at a 25% discount. Energy consumption remains front of mind currently, with consumers and businesses doing their best to save energy where they can. In countries using German-style power outlets, there is a way to not only measure, but also collect such data, thanks to the Voltcraft SEM5000. Placed between the outlet and appliance, the unit delivers accurate readings while logging the data to an SD card. Hence, no wireless configuration or smartphone apps are needed. Appliance defects can also be detected by setting alarms for excessive power consumption or current draw. The device features a high contrast display, making it easy to read in awkward locations. Furthermore, it's maintenance free, doing away with a battery in favor of a supercapacitor that allows the unit to display measurements for up to 10 minutes after it's been unplugged. This episode is sponsored by Espressive, creator of the ESP32 C3. This single-core Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5 LE microcontroller SoC is based on the open-source RISC-V architecture. It strikes the right balance of power, I.O. capabilities, and security, thus offering the optimal cost-effective solution for connected devices. For powerful AI acceleration, you should consider the ESP32 S3. With the same wireless features, it's designed for AIoT applications thanks to its powerful AI acceleration and reliable security features. It also has added support for vector instructions inside the MCU, speeding up neural network computing and signal processing workloads. For more information, check out the links with this video on Elector TV industry channel.
customer expectations for user interfaces have changed over the years with increased use of touch buttons, swipes and pinches, and proximity detection, both in the consumer and industrial application spaces. To ease evaluation of their highly integrated Axiom Silicon offering, Touchnetics have launched their new Axiom Experience Box, or AEB. The around 4 inch or 20 centimeter unit provides access to a broad range of interface capabilities, from multi touch and hover to proximity and force sensing. Together with the Touch Hub 2 software, developers can test ideas and tune the sensor to meet their application's needs. The AEB is available from Touchnetics. The PIC kit was a much loved tool for developers using microchip technology's microcontrollers. Its small size, low cost and versatility meant it could be used for everything from debugging to end of line programming. But unfortunately, development of the device and its software ceased in 2009. But that didn't stop a group of developers from building their own software based upon the original to support the community. The result is PitKit Minus, which works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Both the PitKit 2 and 3 hardware are supported, and their January release of the software includes both a GUI and command line interface. While the Internet of Things seems to be everywhere, it remains challenging for newcomers to know how best to access the massive array of hardware, wireless protocols, and back-end services. To combat this, the group IoT Stars was founded. Arranging events alongside the industry's big trade fairs, they provide a forum of expertise for engineering teams. Their next event is on February the 27th in Barcelona, Spain, making use of the presence of their community visiting the Mobile World Congress. Tickets are available at the link in the description below. Wireless connectivity remains a dark art for many. Even for the experts, it can be difficult to predict the impact of objects made of different materials in the vicinity of an antenna. Luckily, Ignition, a global antenna innovator focused on IoT connectivity, has some guidelines. Their recent blog shares experimental data using an LTE CAT-M evaluation board, operating in the 700 to 900 MHz and 1.7 to 2.2 GHz bands. Placed in close proximity to materials such as wood, concrete, a human or animal body and metal, impact on frequency and antenna performance is gathered and shared. The blog post delivers some great recommendations that should help developers facing similar challenges. Many measurements can be made using a trusty multimeter to quickly determine voltage, current, or the value of a passive component. But some components, such as solar panels, are more challenging to measure. Source measurement units, or SMUs, can be used to characterize their performance by applying a voltage and current while also measuring both parameters. The new SMU4000 from AIM TTI packs a fast and agile high power four quadrant measurement tool into a 2U half rack casing. With its auto ranging power flex technology, it delivers a semi constant power characteristic so that the current rises as the voltage falls. Unlike conventional SMUs, this tool achieves full instrument output power across the majority of the voltage range. Two models are available offering up to plus minus 210 volts at 3 amps with a 25 watt power envelope. A range of software is also available to support two device handshaking and execution of arbitrary list sweeps for automated testing. If you first developed your programming skills using BASIC, you'll remember the home computing revolution of the 1980s. With a plethora of 8-bit machines on the market, brands like Commodore, Sinclair and Amstrad became household names. Four decades on, there is a thriving retro scene helping us to a dollop of nostalgia, both with real hardware and the simpler to maintain memorabilia. 
the Etsy-based Microcomputers Micromuseum brings all the memories flooding back with scale models of everything from the Commodore PET and IBM personal computer to games consoles, such as the PlayStation 1 and original Nintendo. Check them out now to find the perfect gift for yourself or that special engineer in your life. So that wraps it up for this month's episode of News Bytes. If you'd like to learn more about the technologies highlighted, check out the accompanying description and links. Should you have a news update you'd like to share, please drop me a line to tell me more. You'll find my contact details on the Elector website. Or if you prefer, connect with me, Stuart Cording, on LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter. While you're here, please like, subscribe to Elector TV Industry on YouTube and share our videos on whatever platforms you use. Thanks for joining and hopefully we'll see you on Elector News Bytes next time. Thank you.